Team Mind Melt is back at Maker Faire Orlando for Robot Ruckus 2022. We've spent the past year designing, building, and testing a suite of all new tech to power our robots. But unfortunately, at the 11th hour, our new sensor solution went kaput. We still had lots of other changes to test, so we hot glued some infrared receivers on and got the robots limping enough to fight. Three, two, one, fight! That would have been a great time to get in there and, and get, get a hit in there. About a minute 30 left in this match. All right, y'all. All right. A little uh, exchange in the middle of last week. Oh, there you go. That's awesome. Still running. Still running. Bouncing a little Wait, bit too out there. Wait, look how you throw it. Oh, we can see some parts fly off. Looks like a... Uh, like, uh, it was immediately clear in this match that our infrared still couldn't reach across the arena. But what ended it was bad luck. The solder joint of a motor wire broke off. Knowing there was still a problem with the infrared, we arbitrarily doubled the gain in our infrared receiver. Shockingly, it fixed the problem. So Halo was ready to go. Alright, let's get this on the road. Three, two, one, fight! Alright. <laughs> Hey, oh, well, that was fast. Halo was getting up to speed and bounce off the wall, knocking Stank into the pit. But Stank says, no problem. We'll just fly right out of there. Almost literally. We use a specialty connector on Halo that is supposed to be incapable of coming unplugged. Except for if you have a blob of hot glue on the circuit board that just happens to release the mechanical detents inside the connector, thus defeating the mechanism that prevents it from coming unplugged. In three, two, one, fight! So you see Hidden Spin getting up, up the speed. Kind of stuck on the far side. And this is where that unique design causes a little bit of problems because you need to have enough room to kind of spin up. There it goes. Green Goblin though saying, I'm just going to park on that weapon. It's the interesting thing. Spin, and once that wheel gets into the center there, they can start to spin back up. Again, the main advantage here is that robot weight is almost all webbing. It's bouncing down the arena. Green Goblin, though, we're, we're losing up a lot. To, get, uh, to get in there behind that. Big hit by Green Goblin. Minute 10 left. I don't know. I'm trading a little blows here. Nobody's taking any significant damage yet. One minute remains. Green Goblin lining up. Looks to be having maybe a little bit of problems after it was steering. Sit and spin now, stuck in that corner. Not a great place for a robot that needs to travel in a circle, but gets right out. Bounce around the arena. I'm glad you specialize in pretty Oh, this is getting... There we go. There it goes. Oh, oh. 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 Green Goblin. Waiting to get out of here. 30 seconds remain. Green Goblin going in. Oh. And we're going to see some mobility in 10. What happened in this match is still a bit of a mystery. Best we can tell, the EC went bad, causing Hint and Spin to have trouble spinning up and causing the motor to cut out randomly. Meanwhile in the pits, more problems arose. Match 1 and box testing had caused Halo to warp. We deployed our fiercest clamps to bend it back, but things got even worse when one of the motor shafts snapped. That meant the motor had to be replaced, and we could only give the Loctite a few hours to cure. In 3, 2, 1, fight! Alright, go 
Halo's not down quick. Halo's doing this Halo thing. Spinning. Double distraction. Trying to get in there. Go in there. But to get in there, you gotta take a hit. You gotta get in there. Don't be scared. It's okay. Do it. Do it. Do it. Go for it, showing some aggression. Halo. Halo the on. So we need to see some. Yeah. Halo's kind of slowing down. Double destruction. What we heard an opportunity. There we go. And that's the problem with these spinner boxes. You get them stuck, and then you can just get right in there. We see some chips in the room coming off the Halo. Double destruction, now got him against the ropes. Put him in the corner, it's going to be hard to get him to spin up again. One minute remains in this. Double destruction, wearing the halo. We think we need to unstick here. Two, one, resume. Holding the dead shaft on the replaced motor failed. When the shaft twisted out, it pulled the motor wires until they busted the insulation and shorted to the chassis. From there, all hell broke loose, and every digital device in Halo died a fiery death. So overall, the event was a bit of a dud. Hit and Spin got some unlucky damage, and the Halo had more fundamental issues. Moving forward, we're going to continue working on the new sensor solution because it's clear infrared has got to go. We've also decided to retire aluminum as a ring material. It's too prone to warping and difficult to manufacture. And we've got a new 30 pound coming down the pipe that we hope to debut at Norwalk Havoc this year. Thanks for watching.